These pictures were taken on board HMS Victorious during her current tour in Far Eastern waters. Aircraft from ships is probably the most difficult and specialised branch of aviation. The Naval Air Department of the RAE at Bedford is responsible for research and development and for trials in support of these operations. The equipment now on view is the deck landing projector site, which uses optical means to guide out of the deck for landing. We are now watching a series of launches and arrests of Sea Vixen and Buccaneer aircraft. All aircraft carriers launch their aircraft with a slotted tube steam catapult, which is a British invention. These pictures give a good idea of the closing speed during recovery and of the aircraft's vertical rate of descent. The arresting gear shown here is that currently fitted to British carriers. It is being replaced on the carriers which will have Phantom Squadrons by a more powerful gear whose development is shown later in this film. The aircraft having been recovered, the plane guard helicopters are brought aboard. The research and development problems of operating helicopters from ships could in itself provide enough material for another film. The movement of aircraft on the deck calls for a precise manoeuvring on the part of the pilot. This sea vixen parked on the port side moves across the deck to its position for launching. The directing officer guides the aircraft onto the catapult by means of hand signals. And the aircraft is launched. A gannet is the next aircraft onto the catapult. The Buccaneer is launched substantially in flying attitude and the initial tensioning load from the catapult raises the nose to the correct launching position. Notice how small the deck appears to an approaching pilot and how rapidly things are happening. A buccaneer now makes a practice approach followed by a landing. Operational considerations demand that the ship is capable of taking on aircraft at a rate of at least one per minute. These landings illustrate the need for extra strength in a naval undercarriage and for a strong arrestor hook. These matters assume even greater importance in the case of the new Phantom. We have now moved to the airfield at Bedford where a Sea Vixen is being prepared for launch from the raised catapult. As on the ship, the holdback is attached to the rear of the aircraft and the bridle connects the aircraft to the moving part of the catapult. The Sea Vixen is designed to be launched with all three wheels on the deck and the pilot rotates the aircraft to flying attitude after the end of the acceleration stroke.
the catapult shuttle and spreader to which the towing bridle and its arresting gear is attached is retracted in readiness for launching a buccaneer. As at sea, the directing officer uses hand signals to control the approach of the aircraft. A tail skid is necessary on the buccaneer because it is tensioned into a tail down attitude for launching. These pictures illustrate briefly the catapulting tests which must be undertaken before a new aircraft type can be operated satisfactorily and with safety from the ship. The tests are planned progressively to ensure that if any part of the complex design problem involved has been neglected or overlooked in any way, it will be discovered and corrected before the aircraft operates at sea. Trials are also conducted to improve aircraft performance and operational efficiency. Moving from the raised catapult, we come to the more powerful flush design, which was originally installed for the exploration of catapult design problems. For test purposes, a weighted trolley, rather like a railway truck, is used. At the end of the launch, it enters a trough of water, which it collects and throws forward to absorb its energy. It is finally stopped by a wild rope arrestor gear. To match the requirements of the newer aircraft types, including the Phantom, a new arrestor gear, known as the direct acting gear, has been developed. Essentially, this consists of a tube of water each side of the runway through which a piston is drawn by the action of the aircraft. This squeezes the water through a series of small holes in the top of the tube. Each tube of water is contained in a larger outer tube which collects the water for reuse. Gear of this type is already used for emergency purposes at naval air stations in this country and is now being proposed on a much larger scale for civil aircraft. Arresting trials are now in progress and the aircraft can be seen taxiing into the arresting gear. After disengaging from the centre span, it will turn round for another run while the gear is reset. The high degree of reliability of modern arresting gears, which is the outcome of extensive testing such as is shown here, guarantees the successful recovery of high weight modern aircraft closing with the ship at very high speeds and being stopped in a distance of only a little over 200 feet. Extremely high forces are generated and it has to be demonstrated that the aircraft can withstand them repeatedly. This completes a short glimpse of the work necessary to support the operation of aircraft from carriers at sea which have been brought to a high standard of perfection and safety by years of research, development and trials, both at Bedford and at sea. 
This work is continuing so as to achieve even higher standards of operational efficiency in the future.